Hey guys, my name's Nick, Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the Power Virtual Agent for Microsoft and how you create that within Microsoft Teams. Before I get into the video here, if you guys wanna see more content around the MSP space and Microsoft, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm definitely coming out with a video every week just to help showcase new features from Microsoft and help you build your business, understanding the technologies that Microsoft's coming out with. Also, before I get started here, I want to preface this by kind of go over pricing as well first. I don't like to waste anybody's time, and the pricing for virtual legend is often a deal breaker because it is a tough pill to swallow being at $1,000 a month for 2,000 sessions, and that's going in and, and actually interacting with the chatbot as a single session. So I'll be going over the intricacies here, but just keep that in mind if that seems like a lot. There's a lot of great things and cool features about virtual legend is no code solution to creating a whole chatbot within your own environment or even publishing this chatbot within your own website for common FAQs, things like that, which we'll be going through in this video. So uh, definitely stick around if you if you think that that'll be advantageous to you, if you just wanna learn a little bit more about it, but I did wanna come out and let you know that the pricing is $1,000 a month. I learned that later on and was kind of upset by that because it's, it's a little steep for this. So in here, um, I wanted to showcase just the end state of what we're doing here, which is I've built this chat bot and I've added some topics for it to then consume. So it's asking me how to help and I'm going to go ahead and say I want to buy an item here. And it's telling me it's happy to place an order. So what state will be shipping? I'll say Florida. And it's going to ask me if this is acceptable. I'll say yes. So then it gives me a few items and I'll say I want a laptop computer. And it's telling me to go to my and it's telling me to go to my cart to finish my checkout. And it says, yep. I did answer my question. And then it's asking me to rate the experience. and I'm closing out the session. So this is an example of something that you could create. There's a couple different models, obviously, that you can think about whenever you're trying to position the chatbot here. One is obviously for your own internal MSP, so that when people are on your website, potentially, or you have your own help desk, you can have this chatbot running by the most common questions that you get all the time and a self-service capability for your end customers. The other obvious one here is, is reselling this to your end users in the client environment so that they can have this chatbot on their own websites or in their own team's environment. And then you just resell the services here. The only problem again is, is really kind of the steep price plus you probably would want to put on a management fee associated to that as you build the initial layout of the decision tree model and then you move into iterating on that over time obviously with their feedback and what you're seeing with the analytics which we'll get to here in a second so this virtual agent here the power virtual agent is available for a free 60-day trial which is what i have set up in this account and you can access that by either going to power uh, virtual agent powerva.com and signing in with your microsoft credentials as an administrator or coming in here and actually going in and, and searching for Power Automate uh, or Power Virtual Agents, I should say, here within Teams and just clicking on it there. And I've already installed it here, so it knows that I've already signed up for a trial, but if you haven't, it'll ask you to start a trial. And then it'll take you to this page here where you can start to begin to create a new chatbot. And so here you can click on start now and it will go through and it'll ask you to associate this chatbot to a particular Teams channel and to go through the actual creation process after that. And that's when you can start to consume that chatbot on this tab, which is where I've created this MSP chatbot here as well too. So the other place to go ahead and, and start doing this is again, is via the powerva.microsoft.com and you'll get to this site. And again, you'll go through the same process if you haven't started a trial yet, but this will allow you to take in and, and customize a new virtual agent as well. The main differences, I guess, between the two portals is that this allows you to publish the spot, obviously then more than just a Teams channel. 
it allows you to publish this in uh, various fashions, either via third-party applications or grabbing some uh, embedded code that you can put on your own website, which I'll show you here in a second, which is what I did for my own website, so that once you publish this, I put it into the HTML here, and it's rendering the chatbot that I did create as well too. So this is a use case where as an MSP, this might be something that you want to do where you publish your chatbot via, you know, embedded in your in your own website for people to come in and start interacting with it here as well too, just to kind of collaborate and, and maneuver through the decision tree that you've set up as well. So getting back into it here, this is the new chatbot and if you don't if you haven't already created one, it's just going to simply ask you again to associate it to a particular team channel here. So I've associated to this team's test template. And after you do that, it'll go into this creation stage and it'll tell you that it's going through a step one through four process of setting this up, which does take about 15 minutes I've found uh, for, it's, for it to be fully ready here. So otherwise you'll just see a banner up top and this is giving you some I would say comprehensive UI to go in and actually make some changes um, in the sense of the progression that you would want to do. So the big thing that it's doing here is it's taking these topics uh, that you have and it's allowing you to consume a preset list of topics. None of these in particular are ones that I've actually set up. I've modified them, but I've never actually gone ahead and created my own, which you'll see here in, in this video. The other big thing that it can do is it can consume outside FAQs and populate them in here for you to publish them as new topics as well too. So if you have a link to a website or something like that where you have your own FAQ potentially for your own website uh, to drive interest or to consume frequently asked questions surrounding a technical topic, you could upload them here um, by going into suggested topics and just pasting in the URL and it'll actually consume that and, and parse out the question and answer um, all here. And this is just a Microsoft support doc I, I found that is an FAQ that I put in here that it's now consuming and I can then go in and I could try to pre-populate them all and approve them and add them into topics or I could obviously just go one at a time to do this. So FAQs it might be just easiest to, to add them as topics so then you just have questions and answers already populated. In other cases, though, there's going to be certain workflows that you'll want to have in this decision tree model, and that's where this comes into play. So whenever you go in to set up a topic, you're giving it a name and a description here, and then you're going in to add trigger phrases. And these trigger phrases are obviously high-level conversational points that you think a user would ask. The good part is they don't have to be necessarily word by word. Like if somebody says buy X product, they don't have to say buy product directly in order for it to trigger this particular topic in the workflow associated with it. So when I click on go to authoring canvas here, this is where I'm able to go ahead and, and set up the workflow. And it's much like Power Automate if you're familiar with that but it's, it's uniquely just pulling you through the steps that it's taking here. And this is the workflow that I showed you originally that it took me through where it's making all these decisions based off of my responses. So as you recall, I said buy item and it took that and said, hey, I'm happy to place this order. And then I put in a variable here for the user display name because it knows that via your session in Microsoft Teams. And then it has what we call in here as entities, which again, Microsoft has some pre-populated, but you'll be able to create your own, which I'll show here next. And then it goes into this workflow of having, you know, previous conditions being met to then display messaging, display the options here, go into all the further questioning and in the conversation as well too with this uh, survey uh, that you saw as well. So all that's kind of encompassed here within there. And you can actually, when you're building this and you're going to test it out, you can see the workflow um, go through here via this test session. And it's highlighting this on the right-hand side where it's taking you through the entire decision tree and it's showing you that it, it's it's achieving what it's wanting to, not you know going through and, and, and just basically failing certain of these tasks and, and whatnot. 
So the entities here, I'll show real quick as well too. They have the high level ones, which encompass a lot of things that might be useful across just any environment that you might be looking at. Um, but there might be custom ones for you, depending on if it's uh, product questions, if it's something internal to your organization, if it's technical help that is related to a certain um, item like a device or a phone or something like that, that you may want to put in here as actual entities. And then it can work off those entities to then create the decision trees. The last part here um, is also the analytics which then goes in and can pull back information about the sessions that the users are having. And it can say, you know, whether they had engagement rates, what those look like as well. And you can obviously update this with different time frames to update the information. And you can engage uh, what's going on within the organization in the sense of resolutions from topics that have been asked about and what that looks like so you can obviously iterate over the over time here there's another environment i have that i'll pull up here in which the analytics are a little bit more detailed not nothing crazy um, but it does give you some more information here related to these sessions and as it pulls up here you can see that there's there's escalations because they natively build in the ability to talk to an agent or something like that you have engagement rates you have sessions you have an abandonment rate and you have the rate drivers which are related to the topics so you can see if there's a spike in certain topics where maybe it's an educational session you should perform or if there's just general awareness that you can bring um, if there's like a lot of questions about a certain topic or maybe that's an indicator that something's not really clear to the organization so i think these insights are really cool and i think the ability to go in and actually create topics is uh, pretty pretty intuitive as well so i'll show that next here where you can come in let's go ahead and say resetting a user's password i'll just call it reset password and the trigger phrases locked out of my account Fired. I can't remember my password. I can't get into my account. So all those are triggers that can go and they have the high level categories here so that again, it doesn't have to be word for word for this to actually flow into this trigger. Um, so I'm going to say something like it sounds like you are locked out of your account and then i'll put in the user display name here and then i'll ask the question and say is that correct and we're going to say yes or no and you'll notice here that it's basically populating our two conditions here so that we can then go straight into a different workflow. And here, what you're able to do is ask another question. You can actually uh, link this to a Power Automate workflow in which then obviously Power Automate can connect to the third party systems and workflows and things like that. So you can really get as granular as you want here. And otherwise, um, there's a couple more, which is you know showing more messages or even popping over to another topic so maybe if they say, you know, I'm locked out of my account, you have a topic that goes through how to set up or establish a new password, something like that. So it can pop back and forth between two different topics, depending on your workflows. So you can see that this can get pretty granular uh, as far as you want in the fact that you can go in and, you know, publish all these things. The one thing doing my testing is that I found where it really doesn't have the capabilities to link back to your, your PSA ticketing systems in a good way. I tried doing this with Power Automate and it doesn't pass any information in that's relevant to the, into the ticket. So while I can pass information into the ticket into ConnectWise, it's not enough for a tech to go work off of. It doesn't include chat history, it doesn't include username, it doesn't include these things that you would want to make this actually a valuable integration. So what I'd recommend is if you are adopting this, you're basically building it out for FAQs and common workflows where, you know, at the end of the day, you might be 
redirecting them to a link to your ticketing system or a help desk or asking them, you know, providing them a phone number to give you a call, something like that, where they are then sent to another location because it can't really capture the ticket data well and send it into your PSA tool from what I've seen. So keep that in mind, but this is something that you can, you know, test with and, and modify. At the end of the day, though, you can then go ahead and, and decide to publish these. So whenever you're ready to publish them, you can go in and you can publish this into the actual Teams channel that you set up initially there, or like we showed in this uh, web-based version, when you go to publish it, you can choose which channels and that might be embedding it on your website. So there's more features and, and pieces in here that um, you could, could get it into, but that's really the high level that I wanted to cover today and just bring general awareness to how this works. So if anything, go ahead and set up a trial in your own environment, start building out some decision trees, explore how this potentially could save you a lot of time and money by reducing help desk calls, answering FAQs straight from your website or within Teams channels, and see if that ROI matches up to the $1,000 a month that you have to pay to consume the actual chatbot. Again, keep in mind also that's for 2,000 sessions. So that's another factor. You can buy blocks of more sessions, but that's even more money. Uh, each block is about $450 as well too. So keeping all that in mind, definitely think it's interesting to explore, but may not be most cost effective for the SMB. But obviously, again, depends on your scenario. And again, there might be some resale value for a client that can afford to have this if they think that there's enough ROI in that. Or if you can show that to them because you know how many questions they get a day about certain workflows. And even just going in and trying to do a POC within the 60-day trial is something that I would, I would recommend getting into. So that's everything I want to show in this video for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, Feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.